let's go to the next coach that's on the list, Ryan. And and I, I'm trying to look at guys that, as we look at these lists, is also look at guys that have connections to to Marcus Freeman. And a guy that that we talked about earlier that that said probably not for, and I, I would say the same. It's probably not, but someone that I would at least look at is Mike Dembrock at LSU. Now, there's a couple reasons why I don't think it is it, it will work. Number one is Mike Dembrock is making a lot of money at LSU, a yep. lot of money at LSU. Number two, if Mike if Mike Denbrock is there, you got to ask yourself who's the position who's the position coach or quarterback. Because it's not Mike Dembrock. Is it Chancey Stuckey? Could it be Jared Parker? Because I do know Marcus Freeman wants to have this thing be one guy. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what I what I think you're you're looking for. And and I don't know if Coach Denbrock fits that. But if he's clearly the best guy in, on, on the in the conversation, then I think you got to try to find a way to make it work. That's what I think. Yeah, and I mean I. I mean, Coach Denbrock's been very successful at basically every stop he's been at, right? I mean, you talk about what he did at Cincinnati. Obviously, that's where his ties to Marcus Freeman is, right? I mean, they did a lot of good things, obviously. This one year at LSU, I know it was a very different team than the year before because you got guys like Jaden Daniels in at quarterback, and there was a lot of transfer portal players that came in. But, I mean, did a nice job, I thought, in year one. I mean, Jaden Daniels – when you look at what he did at Arizona State, for instance, right? That's the, Jane Daniels was a very pedestrian quarterback in the Pac-12. Like there was talent for sure, but the production just did not match at all. And then in his gear this year with Jane Daniels, I thought he did a lot of good things. I mean, he really, I thought he really got a lot out of you know. Obviously, Jane's a really good runner, but the passing production took a huge step up going from the Pac-12 to the SEC as well, right? So, I mean, Mike Denbrock's obviously a very good offensive coach, and he has been successful, right? He has a track record that you're going to at least consider, right? Like, you're going to make the call. Sure. Again, it doesn't mean that this is the front runner. It doesn't mean that this right. is the guy that you hone in on. But if you're doing your due diligence, it's hard to ignore that Mike Denbrock is a very good offensive coach. The other thing, too, is they made a big jump offensively from last year to go from 26-ish points a game to 34-and-a-half, and they had a terrible defense this year. So they had to do that without much of a defense. And then the other thing you look at, too, Ryan, is you know big jump in production, 368.5 yards per, per game, 5.4 per play. You jumped up to 453 per game and 6.4 per play with basically a completely overhauled roster. And, you know, here, here's the knock on, on Mike Dembrock. If you're looking at his year at LSU, very quarterback heavy offense, not a ton of protection from the running back. Y'all, Mike Dembrock was their offensive coordinator at Notre Dame in 2015. We know he can get, we know he can get, he got, he got a thousand yards from a converted wide receiver. Okay. Like we know the run game's going to be there, right? If he were to be that guy. So I'm not worried about that. He's a great recruiter. He's one of the best men I've ever met in the coaching profession. As a human being, he's one of the best people you'll ever meet. So I think all those things fit. I think he's more of a Midwestern guy in his style. Uh, so there's a lot of things that fit, in my opinion, about that job. And and he did all that with, as we mentioned, a really overhauled roster. And goes to Cincinnati. And what does he do during his tenure at Cincinnati? He's part of a team that goes and makes the college football playoff. Right? So. I mean, Mike Dembrock's done some really good things. He's done some really good things. You know, their Cincinnati offense, to me, was not one that was ever super dynamic. You know, his first year there, they're taking over a team. So the year before Mike Dembrock got to Cincinnati, they averaged 19.3 points per game. His first year, they jumped up to 20.9, then 34.9, then 29.6, 37.5, and 36.9. So, again – they weren't like 40 points a game like some of these other AAC teams. But again, he inherited a team that was scoring 17 points a game, and he had doubled it within three or four years, right? And you've got him playing in the national in the, in the college football playoff, you know. So I think those are things that you look at, Ryan, and you say, you know, give me that kind of jump. Give me a guy that knows how to to kind of win here at Notre Dame, how to build offenses there. There's a lot of things to like. It's just 
the big drawback is can you afford it? Number one. And number two, can you make it work staff wise? I think those are the questions that I have, Ryan. I don't know the answers and I don't know if you can make it work that way. But if you can figure out a way to make it work, that's a guy that you'd have to give a long, a long look at. And he coached with Marcus Freeman for several years. There's respect yes. there. There's a relationship there. I know that Marcus Freeman thinks very highly of, of, of Mike Dembrock. I know that Mike Dembrock thinks very highly of Marcus Freeman. Is it enough for you to overcome the salary demand and the, you know, to make the staff part work? That I don't know. But to me, and that's what we talked about earlier, Ryan. I don't know if you can make that part work. And that's why, that's why I don't think I don't think he at the end of the day he'd be the choice. But if you can figure out a way to make that work, make the staff work, I I think I think that'd be a I'd be totally on board with that as one of the, the potential hires for me. What say you, Mister Roberts? I would say the two things also to add in to Den Brock that are intriguing is. We always talk about the challenges of recruiting at Notre Dame. You already mentioned that he's a really good recruiter. He also knows how to recruit at Notre Dame, right? Like, obviously, from his past experience. And I would also say this, from his time at Cincinnati, he was very well-balanced offensive coordinator, in my opinion, at Cincinnati. I mean, I think of his best team, you know, with Jerome Ford, who was a fantastic running back. But, hey, he also had Desmond Ritter. He also had Alec Pierce. He also un- utilized the tight end position, of Josh Wiley and Leonard Taylor as well. So I think that he is a very balanced approach where you look at him and say he understands that he needs, you know, you get everybody involved. I mean, even this year at LSU, like I mentioned, Jaden Daniels, I don't think he had a great, I don't think he had great running backs, you know? I mean, the the Emory kid has just always been hurt or suspended or whatever. I mean, Josh Williams, I think, may have been their leading rusher this year who's just like kind of fine, like he's nothing special. But he had Malik Neighbors, who's a really talented player, who I think that he really had a breakout season, obviously, this year. You saw down the stretch of the season that they had Jason Taylor's son at tight end that made some plays down the stretch as well. So I think he's shown that he knows how to get a lot out of an offense and to also feature several different aspects of his offense. So I do like the balance, and I do like the fact that he knows how to recruit at Notre Dame because he's literally recruited at Notre Dame. There's no experience like actually doing it at Notre Dame. So I think that there's a lot of positive. Again, I'm not saying that he would be my top choice, but he's be a guy that I definitely do my due diligence with because he has that reputation. He has, he, he has done it and he's done a very good job at the multiple spots he's been at. 